our guest today, Win Woodard. Win. Okay, you've just been out there getting degree after degree after <laughs> degree. Okay, tell us what all those letters are. Uh, I am very fortunate. Thank you for that compliment. Um, that actually Baxter Regional has helped put me back through school. Uh, I am an advanced practice nurse. I just finished my credentialing as a board certified clinical nurse specialist. Congratulations. Thank you. And. Um, well, after I obtained my Master of Science in Nursing as a clinical nurse specialist, I went back for a postgraduate certificate as a nurse educator. So oh, that's my background. Congratulations. Thank that, you. Those are hard tasks, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> a lot of work. It was a lot of yeah, work. Yeah, but you did it and you did it well. So <laughs> congratulations. Something new at Baxter Regional Medical Center with the RN residency program that you're in charge of. What, what is the RN residency program? The RN Residency is a brand new program that we are just beginning at Baxter Regional Medical Center. We have partnered with Versant, who is a company that has, that's their specialty, is producing RN residencies. The goal of the program is to prepare the new graduate nurse right out of nursing school. They're very much in that novice stage. They've, they've been students. They're used to relying on their instructors. And now we want to transition them to where they're safe, competent practitioners. And that, too, is a, is a lengthy process. So with Versant, we've partnered to have a very structured program to help them through that process. Okay. Um, why did we implement that at the hospital? We have always been dedicated to training new graduate nurses. They've <laughs> always gone through specialized training that we have done within Baxter Regional with the great support of the clinical educators at, at the hospital. The difference now is that in nursing in general, there has been a big focus on really making sure that we are preparing those new graduate nurses as well as possible. Uh, in fact, the Institute of Medicine had put out a report that showed with research and data how much more competent and confident um, the residents are after a shorter period of time when they have gone through a residency program. Uh, it has also been shown to increase our retention, which of course we want mm -hmm. to retain those sure. great nurses we train. Sure. And it also really builds a lot of great relationships between not only the residents, but also the experienced staff that are there in the mm -hmm. hospital. Yeah, because they're the mentors, and exactly. as I'm calling them. But you call them different things. You've, you've got a whole uh, structure, stratification of people to help these new residents. So. Talk to us more about that. Okay. The program is actually an 18-month immersion period. That's I'm sorry, awesome. 18 weeks. 18, 18 weeks. 18 months would be really nice. I was going to say, wow. <laughs> 18 weeks, so approximately five-month immersion period that the residents go through. So during that 18 weeks, what they get is they have evidence-based curriculum. So they're in the classroom setting about two days a week. Mm -hmm. And the curriculum is provided by Versant, yet Baxter Regional uses our own subject matter experts, which are our clinicians at the bedsides mm -hmm. in a variety of roles, to come in and to teach that content to the res residents. And it's specialized based on where they work. So whether okay. they may be in orthopedics or a critical care setting, working with our pediatric population, they're getting content specific to the patients they'll be caring for. Okay, okay. Then in addition to the curriculum, then they also receive clinical preceptorship. So what that means is that there is a preceptor, which is an experienced nurse, mm -hmm. at their side at all times during that full 18 week period. And that's wonderful. That's great. That's got to be fun for the more seasoned nurse as well. It is. To, to be the, the preceptor, as you called them, but to be there and to be helping someone younger coming along and just mm -hmm. kind of walking into uh, this whole new arena called nursing. Exactly. It, they, it really is very rewarding to be in that preceptor role. Mm -hmm. It is a lot of hard work. Mm -hmm. um, we've done some things to try to recognize our preceptors and, and the other roles that, that I'll talk about. Um, to make sure that they are recognized for the hard work that they do put in because it takes more time because they have to slow down, they sure. have to provide explanations, they have to allow those residents to explore the whys behind what they're doing so they can take that didactic knowledge that they've received in the classroom setting and now apply that and really develop that critical thinking and clinical reasoning that makes mm -hmm. them great practitioners. And that's just, you'd hit the key, critical thinking. 
Yes. They're really, that's, that's a lot of what your focus is on, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. And that's the most difficult thing really to develop because that's not something that you can learn in a classroom. And that's mm -hmm. why it really takes the blended approach between the classroom and the clinical application in order to make sure that we really are producing those nurses that are going to be able to provide that safe quality care that we're looking for mm -hmm. for all of our patients. Wonderful. Talk to us more about, you've got, um, what are some of the roles? You mentioned the preceptor, but what are some of the roles in the RN residency program? The other thing that's really unique now that we are partnering with Burson as opposed to some of the programs we've put mm -hmm. through the, um, the residents through in the past are that they also have a supportive components um, process that they will be going through. The supportive components consist of two specific roles. Those are mentors and debriefers. Our mentors are all nurses who are a minimum of bachelors prepared. Oh, okay. And their goal is to help support that new graduate nurse in developing their professional practice. So really to help them understand what it means to be a profession in, in the profession of nursing mm -hmm. and how they can impact and drive their practice, which is very much in alignment, as you know, mm -hmm. with other initiatives throughout the hospital with our journey to excellence, um, shared governance that we have implemented. Right. It falls right into line. So it really helps those residents to know you know, what if I want to go back for advanced degrees? What professional organizations should I consider joining? Um, should I consider some type of certification in a specialty? And it really does help them develop and guide them toward those, those goals and keeps them always reaching for that next level of learning. So really, when they've become a registered nurse, they're just starting out on their journey as a nurse. Absolutely, and I think that's really the push that we're seeing in nursing today. Uh, where before, you know, you can go through two years of school and have an associate's degree and be an excellent nurse. And we have some amazing uh, nurses taking care of our patients mm -hmm. with, with a two-year degree. It's not just that, um, there, you know, it takes more than that to be prepared. But if you choose to go forth, which the profession of nursing is really pushing us to do mm -hmm. now to obtain at least a four-year degree, then there really are a lot of opportunities that open up for you in the field of nursing that haven't always been tapped into in the past. Mm -hmm. I know we've had other folks on the show that we've talked about this and um, even when I've talked with uh, younger students that have come through on tours from the high schools, that type of thing going through and you know kids being kids, well I don't like to, you know, I don't like all the body fluid stuff and I said, oh my goodness, I said there are so many opportunities, you, you absolutely never even have to see a patient That's if you got true. into the, to the electronic medical record mm -hmm. arena for instance, mm -hmm. that you yourself were in it for a long time and absolutely. got it kicked off and started at the hospital. So There's lots of different venues for nursing. You bet. And then the other role that, that I'd like to make sure that I give credit to is the debriefer role. Mm -hmm. So as we've said, in addition to just all the knowledge and the skills that it takes to be a nurse, there's also a huge emotional component to becoming a nurse. Mm -hmm. So the debriefer's role, are to, they are to guide that new nurse through all the emotional things that they have to deal with. So the stress of maybe being with a patient who is not maybe not going to recover. And how do, you, how do you help them through that process and maintain their comfort and their dignity and support their family? Um, how do you handle it when you've got ethical issues that you're facing or, or difficult situations? And they're there not only just during that 18 weeks, but they actually support the residents through the first full year of residency. They have formal support throughout that process that's, for both the mentors and the debriefers. That's wonderful. That is wonderful because that, you're really treating the whole person. Absolutely. I mean, it's not just more education or bedside care or learning a particular procedure. It's really looking at the at the complete person of who the resident resident is. So absolutely, yeah. and communication is so key into everything that we do in nursing because you can have great skills and great knowledge, but if you don't have that special touch. Um, it's, it's just not the same experience for the patient. So that's mm -hmm. really what we're trying to impress. And we have both nurses and other clinical staff, including chaplains, social workers, um, other x-ray technologists that'll be working with our residents in that capacity. So they really see it from a, from a holistic approach in, in different departments and not just the nursing process. Mm -hmm. Um, how many residents do you have? We have 10 residents that are starting with us, okay. and they're starting throughout the hospital in different specialties, including med-surg, pediatrics, orthopedics, 
um, step down area, which is our progressive care, mm -hmm. uh, our intensive care unit, and also our women and newborn care center. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. So that, that's, that's a huge spectrum within the hospital that yes. they're covering. That's great. And I'm thinking of all the people that uh, run those particular areas and thinking, oh, these are such lucky residents. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> and, and that is another, you know, it's obvious the benefit that the resident gets out of the program. But I, I also want to make sure that I stress how much our other folks that are involved from within the hospital are benefiting from the residency as well. Because as mentors and preceptors, debriefers, subject matter experts, when they're interacting with the residents, they really are on their own journey of professional growth and development. Mm -hmm. So it's a great benefit for the hospital organizationally as well. Uh, yeah, I, absolutely. This, the, the hospital, everyone in it is just delighted that we have this program because we can all see the benefits to it. Um, because as you said, you know, people, I think sometimes leave positions because they don't feel comfortable, they don't feel perhaps valued, they don't feel, uh, gee, I, you know, I'm, I don't know that I'm educated enough to do this, and, and they'll, they'll drop out, so to speak. But That is an excellent point. Actually, um, the other thing that Versant has really gonna, is going to help us do and have done for other facilities who have partnered with them is to, they take a lot of metrics and a lot of data, mm -hmm. and the data absolutely shows that, especially during weeks 8 through 12 of the residency, very mm -hmm. commonly, there is that dip in confidence, and, and the residents uh. begin to question, can I really do this? And mm -hmm. that's why all the supportive components are built very strategically around that time that we typically see that decline in confidence so we can make sure we're supporting them through that process and building those relationships that, that do. It builds that loyalty and they want to mm -hmm. stay. Right. Let's continue after we take a short commercial break. We'll be right back with Wynn Woodard and she is here talking about the new RN residency program at Baxter Regional Medical Center. Don't go away. We'll be right back. 